Hello YouTube, this will be part 3 of my series Infiltration Basics and in this part I'll be discussing different types of filters and what they mean in terms of efficiency and convenience to maintain. So let's get on it. So basically there are three different types of filtration in terms of how the media is laid out. Now I'm gonna divide the classification like this because there's basically only three ways you can have your uh, media set up and the most common way is to have it submerged this basically means whatever media you have it is all submerged inside water so that is how your media will be laid up and the vast majority of filters will be in the submerged type it can be under gravel or canister filters or having a sump filter or hang on back filter pretty much all the filters will have uh, the media that is submerged within the water. Now a different way of setting, about, setting it up is called a wet dry filter and it is also known as a trickle filter. So instead of having the media all submerged in the water, the media is outside of the water. And instead of having this submerged inside the water, you have something that trickles water down onto the media. So you have the water rain onto the media, but the media is not submerged. That will be what constitutes a wet dry filter or a trickle tower, because water is trickling down onto the media and not having it submerged. The final way you can have your media set up is to have it fluidized. It is also called a moving bed filter. So in this setup, your media is not stationary. All of these types, your media is staying still and the water is moving. In this your water is moving and your media is moving as well. So your media is constantly tumbling around. And so basically you have some sort of water current that is running, say, like this. You have a pretty strong current running like that and that makes the media tumble around within the filter. And that is a fluidized bed or also known as a moving bed filter. And these filters defin um, basically have different degrees of efficiency. Basically, in terms of efficiency, the moving bed filter has the highest efficiency. Next is wet dry, and next is submerged. And there are vi other videos on YouTube that discuss this, and people know that fluidized, uh, fluidized filters and moving bed filters have the highest effic efficiency, but people don't really understand why that is. And in this video, I'll try to explain why our uh, fluidized bed and wet dry filters are known to be more efficient than submerged type filters. So let's go back to the nitrogen cycle. So everybody know this, ammonia becomes nitrite, nitrite becomes nitrate. And this is the key to biological filtration, this reaction right here. And this is done by bacteria. And one thing that people don't notice is that each step along the way, you need oxygen and lots of oxygen. So basically, for this reaction to run, vast majority of the time, the oxygen is the limiting factor. So how much oxygen you can supply to your bacteria is going to affect how much uh, filtration you can get out of that media that you have. In fact, in wastewater treatment, there is a concept called BOD. And BOD is basically biological oxygen demand. And BOD is a measure of how dirty the water is. So high BOD means you need lots of oxygen to clean the water. So basically how you measure how dirty the water is, is how much oxygen you need to make it clean. So that is how critical oxygen is in cleaning your water. So oxygen is the limiting factor. In fact, aeration, which is adding air to the water to get it more oxygen. Um, if you go to wastewater treatment plants, the highest um, amount of energy that they're, use, they're using is just to run these huge blowers to blow air into the water. So aeration is a critical part in cleaning up wastewater and it's the exact same for your um, aquariums. You need to get that oxygen in the water to have a high efficiency of filtration. So, well, the thing about oxygen is that oxygen is a gas. And because of that, oxygen inside the air 
will always be a whole lot more than oxygen that is dissolved in the water, because gases just don't like to stay dissolved inside liquids. Because oxygen is a gas, it likes to have all this free room to roam around. It doesn't like to stay confined inside here, inside the water. So oxygen does not dissolve inside water very well. And that is why your submerged filters will have the lowest efficiency, because they have the low um, oxygen water that is surrounding them completely. And wet dry filters, they're exposed to air. So the more air they get, um, they will have more oxygen available. That is where the efficiency really starts kicking in. So let's say you have a submerged filter like this. The filter is completely submerged in the water and it's not going to get the most amount of oxygen available. It's only oxygen available to this is dissolved oxygen. So it's going to have the lowest efficiency because it, uh, it is limited by how much oxygen it can access. And then the next thing you can have is a wet dry or trickle filter where the water is raining down onto the media. And what this water does, it forms a film around the media. So the media, the water is going through the media, it's getting processed by the bacteria, but it is in contact with air with a very thin film. So it nearly has the same amount of oxygen as air instead of water. So this has a much higher oxygen, so much higher efficiency. What about a fluidized bed? So a fluidized bed has the media constantly churning around. And this means um, there are no dead spots where there's low oxygen. So as long as you're pumping high oxygen of water constantly into the tank to create this flow of media, um, you're not gonna, uh, oxygen is not going to be a limiting factor because fresh uh, water is constantly pumping in and a lot of times these uh, uh, fluidized bed filters they actually have aeration inside them to create this flow instead of like having some sort of pump inside so that also adds aeration and another thing is that because the media is constantly moving around there are no spots where the dirty water is not getting into so in case of a stationary media there's there may be some spots where the water isn't really raining down so then let's say the water is somehow like not getting into this area here. So this area is not being utilized for filtration because for some thing wrong in the system, the water is not getting to it properly. And the same thing can happen in a submerged filter. But if you have a moving bed, because the media is constantly churning around, 100% of the media is being utilized. And another thing is, um, with filters, you get some detritus buildup. Um, it's kind of unavoidable. So let's say you have some detritus buildup around this side here. And that is going to clog up the surface area that can be utilized for filtration. The moving bed, because they're constantly churning around, uh, knocking into each other, the detritus is going to get removed automatically and the media is going to clean itself. So that means 100% of the media, 100% of surface area that you have inside this uh, space, is being used for filtration and that amount of a surface area is not limited by how much oxygen is present. So this is high oxygen and 100% of surface area is being utilized. And this also has high oxygen but um, not 100% um, of the surface area is, will be utilized um, realistically. And this thing has low oxygen and also less than 100% of the surface area is being, util being utilized. So that is why people say um, it is theoretically um, the fluidized bed or moving bed filters have the highest efficiency. But that's not really the whole story. So basically, why isn't everyone using just fluidized bed if it's so good in terms of efficiency? Well, because it's kind of theoretically better, but there are some uh, downsides to it. So basically what it comes down is to convenience and efficiency. So the reason pretty much all the filters are configured to have submerged media is because it's convenient to do so. For a fluidized bed, you have to have specific conditions. A, you need special media. 
you can't fluidize every single media because some media is heavy and it won't churn around. You'll need a really high flow to make it tumble around. So you're going to need some sort of media that is usually specially designed for a fluidized bed filter such as K1 Coldness. And you can also even use something like sand. But you will need some sort of media that is compatible with being fluidized. And B, in order to get the fluidized correctly, you kind of have to configure it correctly so that all the media is churning around properly. If you don't build the, feed, uh, the filter in a specific configuration, some media is not going to churn around and you're not going to get that fluid, the, um, all the benefits of a fluidized filter. So this fluidized filter needs the most specific setup. And the wet dry or the trickle tower also, you need to have some sort of configuration where um, the media is exposed to the air. So there is a limited configuration in which you can have a wet dry or trickle tower. So it is limited. Whereas submerged, you can have it however you want. You can have it inside a tank or inside a sump or inside a canister or whatever. That's why canister filters, hang on back filters, under gravel filters, pretty much all filters have them submerged because they're not limited in their configuration and what you can do. Basically, if you have a space where you can run some sort of current um, in terms of water through it, you can have submerged media. You're not limited in there. So this has the highest convenience and this has the highest efficiency so basically you need to balance out convenience and efficiency and so basically for most purposes submerged media is fine there is really not much benefit to, to trying to make wet dry or fluidized filter um, due to the convenience of having the media submerged so vast majority of the time it doesn't matter now when these fluidized and wet dry filters start making sense is with larger bio loads. So basically, um, your cost effectiveness increases as your bio load increases. So if you have large fish like arowanas or koi or stuff like turtles that have a large bio load, um, in order to meet that bio load with a submerged filter, you're going to need a very large filter filled with media. But if you um, utilize something like wet dry or fluid ice, because they have a higher efficiency, you will be able to get away with a smaller filter. So basically, if you have huge fish inside a huge tank, it makes sense to go for wet dry or fluid ice because you won't need a huge filter to a uh, filter the water. You can get away with a smaller, more practical size filter. So those are the only cases where really these things start to, um, you will be able to reap the benefits of these um, high efficiency filters. Um, that being said, um, that brings us to another point. So basically what I talked about in terms of nitrogen, nitrogen cycle is an aerobic process. But aerobic is not everything that is um, being used for filtration. There is also anoxic, and sometimes people call it anaerobic, although it's technically not correct. Technically, it is anoxic, and anoxic means no oxygen. Aerobic means lots of oxygen. So the efficiency that we discussed in terms of cleaning water um, is the aerobic process alone. So wet dry and fluidized is more efficient only in terms of the aerobic side of the story. But there is also an anoxic filtration that goes on. So um, even if you don't have oxygen, um, the nitrogen will still be cleaned up through anoxic processes. Um, so, just because you're having super high oxygen is not the whole story. That just means that the aerobic filtration is really good. So, is wet dry and fluidized way more efficient than um, having just conventional submerged? Not by a large margin. It's slightly more efficient. So, um, there's no reason to like 
go to fluidize immediately for every single tank. If you have a small tank, just do whatever you want. If you have a very large tank with big fish, then you may want to consider fluidized or wet dry uh, type filters. So that will be the end of part three here. I discussed several different um, types of filters in terms of how the media is laid out and why um, fluidized, fluidized filters are more efficient and also that um, fluidized wet dry filters are not really beneficial for every single tank. It only matters if you have large tanks with large fish. So that is the end of part three. And this concludes my basics of filtration series. And in subsequent videos, I will move on to discussing how I achieve no water change tanks and how the ecology of the tank works out and such. And so that everyone watching the videos can set up their own no water change tanks and you won't have to waste time uh, doing water changes when you can just enjoy your tanks more. So that's the end of the series, guys. Thanks for watching.